This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. Just where do we get the idea that Christians will be taken away in a rapture before anything bad happens? We certainly don't get it from the Bible. In fact, if some say it is in the Bible, they're just not reading their Bible closely enough. All one has to do is read the story of the Exodus, the blueprint for the end times. Not even the Israelites were spared from the tribulation that came upon the Egyptians. Yes, they were protected from harm, but they did go through it. And now it's our turn. Tonight, Michael Rood reveals the truth of what must happen before the Messiah returns. It's episode two of The Mystery of Iniquity. Because it's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. Well, Shabbat Shalom, Torah fans. Welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. In 1905, author George Santayana coined the expression, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Well, in the Exodus, the Israelites were caught off guard, but you don't need to be. The revelation is a repeat of the Exodus on a spiritual level. And as you may recall, the Israelites did not escape tribulation. They were protected from it in their homes in Goshen, but they were still there as all the chaos and sued around them. That is what's coming our way before the Messiah returns. Episode two of The Mystery of Iniquity with Michael Rood is coming up next and he'll tell you all about it there. Also, it's a new year on the Gregorian calendar and a relatively new month on the astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar. Uh, this is the second Shabbat in the month of Tevet and it was during this week in history that the angel Gabriel, better known as Gabriel, informed Miriam, better known as Mary, that she would give birth to the Messiah and that would be born he would be born nine months from now on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, which, of course, is when we celebrate God dwelling with his people. Makes perfect sense. What does not make perfect sense is that the same Yeshua would return to us before the tribulation. Let's preview tonight's episode of Michael Rood's Mystery of Iniquity with the Director of Ministry Development for Rood Awakening International, David Robinson. It's good to be here. Welcome, David. Yeah. So, yeah, the pre-tribulation rapture, I'm not sure where we get this from, but I was taught it all my life in church, and there's been movies made all about it with Kirk Cameron and all that kind of thing. But I, you know, when you read the Bible, it's like, you know, when you really read it, you begin to wonder, well, Revelation sure looks like Exodus. How come we didn't see this before? Yeah, and, and it's just God's pattern. It's the cyclical pattern, just mm -hmm. like the seasons. And if you want to know the end, go back to the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and so this is what the, the, the mystery of iniquity is all about. Is like, where do we get all these, these crazy things from? Mm -hmm. And you'll see more of that tonight with Michael. If you did not see the first episode, I encourage you, go watch the first episode from last week. It's a great series. Uh, if you have the book, share it with friends. And if you want to share this uh, episode, you can also do that. Uh, we are going to have this on DVD and Blu-ray. That's right. And uh, the link is right there at the bottom of your screen if you want to get that for folks. And right now you can get it uh, while we're playing these episodes on Shabbat Night Live. Uh, we have a special, it's 20% off uh, the DVD if you want to get it for friends. So, uh, the, yeah, for, for pre-order, exactly. It's always a great thing to give, and especially the book. But now that Michael's explaining his book, you're going to get all the behind the scenes and between the lines type of stuff right. that he doesn't say in the book uh, that now he's thought about for several years. <laughs> gonna That's right. It. You're gonna, he's going to expand on things he's already written about. And it's really good. Yeah, it's wonderful. Now, something else is really good. It's the beginning of the, of the new month, mm -hmm. and we have a new teaching uh, that Michael always does, a love gift teaching. And this month, it's called Don't Go to Jerusalem. This is what Paul, Paul the Apostle's friends were telling him uh, when he was about to go to Jerusalem, but they actually got a word from the Holy Spirit warning him, don't go, there's danger waiting for you. And for whatever reason, which is still a mystery to me, and this is why we have to watch Michael's teaching, why did Paul go anyway? It didn't make sense, but he was still running his race. Did he think it was done, or, or what happened there? Uh, Michael will let us know. That's right. So that is in this month's <laughs> teaching called Don't Go to Jerusalem. And uh, with, with that theme, with the love gift, uh, 
with, with a gift of $50 or more, mm -hmm. uh, you will get that teaching. That's Michael's gift to you for giving to the ministry through our Love Gift program. He'll give you that teaching for $50. Uh, and then beyond that, we have a bunch of gifts that actually show Jerusalem on them. Uh, this is what Paul would have seen. Uh, all of these gifts here have scenes of Jerusalem from Paul's time on them. So as you can imagine, he's going to Jerusalem, he knows danger's waiting for him, and these are the scenes of the city going through his head. So it's kind of a neat tie-in. Uh, so David, for a gift of $100 or more, what do folks get? Yes, we get this beautiful cup uh, that has the, the picture of Jerusalem uh, as seen by Paul in that, yeah. that time. We also have this pewter mezuzah. Well, the mezuzah. Ooh, oh, we don't know, know, the, well, we, we know what it says. <laughs> yes, a little scroll, <laughs> this uh, Deuteronomy 6. Uh, as you can see, this pewter mezuzah uh, has a Shema. And there's a scroll that sits in the back as you put this against your post. Or okay, your so house. you put it put it in there and just sort of mm -hmm. fasten it to the wall with a with scroll behind. Is that yes, the idea? Yes, okay. that's it. So that's for your gift of $100. Okay. And next we have... Oh, this is, see, yeah, this is a, oh, it's a couple of tea lights. It's a candle holder. It's okay. a candle holder, yeah. All right. That says uh, Shabbat Shalom. All right. And that also true. has, in behind Shabbat Shalom, there's also a picture of Jerusalem. And it's, this is a heavy base. This it is. This is really, marble or what marble. is this? Yeah, it's wow. a marble base. Okay. And then we have the pewter. We have a pewter uh, theme here. And this is a pewter plate that says Jerusalem, uh, the city of the great king, the joy of the whole earth. And it's a beautiful picture of Jerusalem right here. And you've also and got, got uh, priests lighting the menorah. menorah. yep. And then the altar of incense there mm -hmm. as well. And this is uh, for a gift of $300. Okay. And uh, you get all this for that. Wow. For gift. Yep. Okay, so the, the 100, now the, the 50 is the teaching. Mm -hmm. The 100 is this. And the teaching. Oh, and the teaching and as the well, teaching. right. And in the 300s, all of this plus the teaching. Wow, okay, so that's for January only. January only, All right. great value. And folks can get that at monthlylovegift.com. And something else we're doing now too as well, if you have folks that uh, speak Spanish mm -hmm. and they watch En Rudo Despertar, uh, featuring Alvaro Martinez, mm -hmm. who does the voice of Michael Rude, uh, so that Michael's lips, he always jokes yeah. his lips move, but it's not him <laughs> speaking, it's Alvaro <laughs> speaking. Uh, so if you go to En Rudo Despertar, of course you'll see all of Michael's teachings, but now at monthlylovegift.com, you can tell them to go to that, that site in English. We also have a Spanish version of the teaching now. That's right. That's right. Uh, that is uh, that is whatever. Don't go to Jerusalem says in Spanish. I'm not sure what it is. But... <laughs> I'm not going to attempt that one. Yeah. So uh -huh. Michael has that as well. But you'll also get all these gifts too. Now, granted, all of these are in uh, English. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, uh, of course, your Spanish friends would, would appreciate that as well. And, uh, you know, the reason uh, Michael wanted us to do this is because uh, with A Rude Awakening, you, you give to A Rude Awakening, we so appreciate it because, you know, lots of other folks are able to see this program because uh, you give. Because you so, gift, that's right. Exactly. So it, we really appreciate you giving to us. You could give to anyone. Really, when you're giving, you're giving to God because of all the blessings he's shown you, all the revelation he's given to you, not necessarily through, uh, you know, anything we've said or Michael has said, but the things that he is saying through Michael. And so if that's changed your life, we really appreciate you supporting it so that someone else can see it. And now this goes to the Spanish uh, other languages as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, with all the other languages, um, we don't necessarily have folks who have caught on to that yet and, and appreciate the, the value of, of giving to the ministry. So when you give to the ministry, uh, you're also helping to support the message in other languages that's as well. That's right, and that's very important because we really feel called to go to the nations. Mm -hmm. So we wanna take this truth to the whole world and, uh, and try to usher in as many as we can help usher in into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. so. And we've actually had a request from folks who speak Spanish and say, hey, friends of mine would like this teaching. I would like to support your ministry, but I'd like a Spanish version of it to pass on to them so that they'll get it. And you know, a lot of people, because of what they're seeing we're doing with the Spanish translations, we have people calling in going, hey, I, I'm a translator, I do German, I'm Russian. So we have other people that are wanting to come on board and help translate uh, uh, Michael's messages into other languages. And those are all folks uh, who are volunteering their time. That's right, right? they're just volunteering their time. We actually have a Spanish, uh, or part of, yeah, we have a, a Spanish uh, chart mm -hmm. of uh, the, the 70 weeks of, of the Messiah. And we also have a Chinese version of that as well, and yeah, of the, the Revelation, Revelation That's right. as well. That's right. All right, David, well, thanks for joining us today. It's great to be here, and um, I'm looking forward to the next time. All right. <laughs> well, watch uh, this series with friends. If they can't watch now, you can get the DVD or Blu-ray for them. This affects their future and their eternity. No kidding, we're talking about episode two tonight of our new series based on Michael Rood's best-selling book, The Mystery of Iniquity. But before that, it's the Kiddush with Michael. So get your bread and wine and get ready. Stay tuned. Figuring out what the Almighty wants you to do with your life is hard enough. But what do you do when your believing friends and family share advice from the Holy Spirit that just doesn't seem to make sense? 
Michael Rood shares what Paul the Apostle did in a situation like this in a new teaching called, Don't Go to Jerusalem. But who wants to go to Jerusalem? Who says, I don't count my own life dear, I just want to finish this thing. He was tired. Don't Go to Jerusalem by Michael Rood reveals the behind the scenes story you've never heard about Paul's decision to face persecution head on. An inspiring call to run our race as believers in courage and faith. This groundbreaking teaching is not for sale. It's a gift from Michael Rood in appreciation for your $50 donation to help spread the truth of the Messiah's ministry. Donate $100 or more and you'll also receive a handmade resin and stainless steel wine cup depicting a scene from ancient Jerusalem. Plus, a pewter mezuzah containing a miniature Torah scroll. Hang it in your doorway to welcome everyone who enters your home. Or for a gift of $300 or more, you'll receive Don't Go to Jerusalem, the resin and stainless steel cup, the pewter mezuzah, plus this gorgeous pewter plate featuring scenes from the Second Temple, and a twin ram's horn shofar candle holder. Get this collection now, available in January only. It's a gift from Michael Rood to thank you for helping to spread the true message of the Messiah through a Rood Awakening International. You'll get the Don't Go to Jerusalem teaching for a love gift of $50. The teaching, the stainless steel cup, and the pewter mezuzah for a gift of $100 or more. Or get everything plus the pewter plate and ram's horn candle holder for a love gift donation of $300 or more. Get these gifts now while supplies last. Call 888-766-3610. That's 888-766-3610. Or visit monthlylovegift.com. The Chronological Gospels Bible is changing lives all over the world, putting everything the Messiah did in exact chronological order and explaining the behind the scenes truth of what the Messiah did, when he did it, and why. The timing of it all means everything. And now, the Chronological Gospels can be easier on your eyes. The larger print edition features 40% larger type and every page appears exactly the same as the original, so you can follow along with others who have the regular size version. The Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition also has wider margins to write notes, and the premium quality paper means you can highlight without soaking through. Plus, the Larger Print Edition lies flat, so you can teach without having to hold the book open. The Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition is a big and beautiful coffee table book, measuring a full 12 inches tall and 9 inches wide. Study the Bible with clarity and ease. I love the size of this book. This is 9 by 12. The paper is, is perfect because it doesn't bleed through when I write on it. I can mark it up and I always make notes in all my Bibles. Everything is the same place as it is on the smaller version, and I can just stand back and I can teach from it, and it's just, it's the perfect size. I pray thee, of whom speaks this prophet? Order the Chronological Gospels Larger Print Edition by phone or online. You'll get 40% larger type than the original. Call 800-788-7887. That's 800-788-7887 or get the Chronological Gospels Bible Larger Print Edition online at arudawakening.tv slash large.
Traditions that we inherited from Babylon through Constantine have us occasionally with a little plastic cup and a little round wafer in a church service having what is called communion. But Yeshua was not having communion with his disciples. It was the last meal before his crucifixion, which happened at the time the Passover lambs were being sacrificed the following morning. Yeshua took this opportunity to explain something that had been embedded in the the Israelite culture for then over a thousand years. Mel Exotic brought forth bread and wine to Abraham and he blessed the Most High saying, Baruch Atah Yehovah, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem Min HaAretz. Blessed are you, Yehovah, our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Yeshua said, this represents my body which will be broken for you. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. And so we break this bread and we do it in remembrance of him. Likewise, Yeshua took the cup and he blessed the most high with that blessing that Melchizedek blessed the most high. Baruch Atah Yehovah. Eloheinu melech ha'olam, borei pari hagafen. Blessed are you, Yehovah, our Elohim, the king of the universe, the creator of the fruit of the vine. Yeshua said, this represents my shed blood, which will be poured out for the remission of sin. I will not drink another drop of the fruit of the vine. You take my cup and divide it among yourselves because I won't drink it until I drink it again with you in my father's kingdom. The marriage supper of the lamb, Yeshua will lift this cup and he will say, Lahai, to life everlasting. And until then, we remember what he's done and remember that marriage supper of the Lamb. Get ready. The mystery of iniquity, the legal prerequisites to the return of the Messiah. These are the things that must take place before Yeshua can and before he will return. Why do we know this? Because it is written. Once God has given his word, once a revelation comes, he does not change his mind. He only changes his mind if he gives a condition. He gives that condition many times to Israel. If you will do this, then I will do that. If you don't do this, then I will do that. So conditions are throughout the scripture, but the conditions concerning the coming of the Messiah are unconditional. These are the things that must take place, and that way we cannot be deceived by anyone not by a word from heaven, not, oh, the Lord gave me a word, or a letter as if it came from Paul, and now we massage it and twist it and pull it out of context to say what we want to say, or if a spirit comes down and tells a young girl in Scotland that there is a pre-tribulation rapture. I don't care who has written books on left behind, which gives the whole idea that the next sigh, the next breath, the next rustle of a leaf, the Lord could return. That is a lie from hell, and I'm not gonna take it anymore. I'm sick and tired of this nonsense that is being promulgated in the Christian world. It is heresy. It's a lie, and I was party to it. For 20 years, I prophesied falsely. I was a biblical false prophet because I said we were all gonna get out of here in the middle of a five-course Sunday brunch at the country club after church on Sunday morning before anything bad happens to us. Even though more than a third of a million Christians were slaughtered just last year on planet Earth, oh, but it's not gonna happen to us because we're Americans, we're American Christians. God wouldn't let his bride get beat up. No, 
The bride is supposed to get her garments washed and spotless because the bride has her garments stinking and soiled with pagan sun god worship. Oh yeah, you know, the holy days of Christianity, Easter, the Babylonian sex goddess, the big-breasted goddess of Babylon, and uh, who, who came down from heaven in a giant egg on, on the first Sunday after the vernal equinox, and in order to proclaim her divinity, changes a bird into an egg-laying rabbit. That's why we've got the Goddess of Fertility magazines with the, with the bunny on it, and the Goddess of Fertility dressed up like a bunny, because it's pagan sun god worship, the reincarnated wife of Nimrod as Easter. And then we, we've got Christmas, the child sacrifice, the child mass of December 25th, the day that, that Nimrod was reincarnated as little baby Tammuz. Yeah, these are what we've got uh, in Christianity today and our garments are filthy. They are stinking and we have got to get these things cleaned up and if trouble has to happen, and this is what Isaiah said, that, that you, you don't have to take the ox cart over to grind the, the fitches and the cumin. You know, you just beat them out gentle with the staff, but there are other things you have to grind. You have to tread them under the, the hooves of horses in order to break them, to mold them, and to shape them. He's giving this example as, as God will do what he has to do to finally purify a people and get them ready for the Messiah who will rule upon the earth with a rod of iron and the whole world will be filled with the knowledge of God. He is, we right now, according to what Yeshua said in the book of Revelation, we are priests and kings. He has made us priests and kings. At Mount Sinai, we were offered to be priests and kings if we would keep the commandments. We said we would keep the commandments. The Almighty then shouted down his commandments to us. Then, when Moses went up into the mountain and spent 40 days getting the revelation concerning the building of the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the table of showbread, the altar of incense, the lamp, seven branch lampstands. When he was getting all that, and the Almighty then gave him the tablets of stone, and he walked back down the mountain, we had already broken the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods in my face. We, we had built an altar to a golden calf. Aaron had made a golden calf and said, tomorrow is a feast to Yehovah. The Almighty was so impressed with that. He said, stand back, Moses, I'm gonna kill them all right now and start over with you. Because we had broken the blood covenant. The covenant that Moses had us enter into before he went up into the mountain in which he sprinkled the blood of bulls, gallons and gallons of blood sprinkled upon the people, upon the scroll, upon the altar, and he said, this is the blood covenant. Whoever breaks the covenant dies. If God breaks his covenant with Israel, he dies. If you break your covenant with God, you die. And that's when we incurred the death penalty. When we are offered to be priests and kings, we broke the covenant. But Yeshua, as it says in Revelation, the first chapter, he loved us and he washed us with his own blood. Yeshua, who never broke the covenant, volunteered to die in the place of the guilty party. And when he did so, he then could renew the covenant that offered to make us priests and kings. He washed us with his own blood, renewed the covenant, and has made us priests and kings. Now, we operate as priests and kings, that's what we're called to do, because he has promised us that if we do what he asks us to do, then we will reign with him as priests and kings on the earth. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that we're gonna go up to heaven and sprout wings and sit on a cloud and play a harp and smoke cigars for eternity and sit around and ask the Apostle Paul stupid questions like we do in Sunday school classes. If I had to sit 
in heaven and listen to Christians ask stupid questions for eternity, that would be hell. No, where in the scripture do we see this? Nowhere. This is Hallmark Christianity. This is pulling a rabbit out of the hat that doesn't exist. Oh, oh, I sit in Sunday school class, as I told you last week, sit there for two years. Men's Bible studies, several a week, because I want, I want to find out what in the world has been going on in America. I've been gone for 20 years. What is going on in church? What's going on in Sunday school? What, what are these people talking about? And I find out they're talking about pure nonsense. They don't read the scriptures in context. They have no idea the chronology of events. And if you don't have chronology, you don't have cause and effect. You just pull out a little numbered sound bite and this is what this verse means to me. It's like, you idiot. You know, it doesn't matter what it means to you. It matters what it meant to the people to whom the revelation was given. And if you can understand that, then perhaps you can understand how it applies to your life now. But if you don't understand it, what it meant to them, you don't have a clue. That's why I say, let the Jews interpret the scriptures that Jews are written, and we'll leave plenty of time at the end of every seminar and every teaching for the Gentiles to interpret all the scriptures that Gentiles wrote, which is none. But yet, they want to interpret the scriptures through their version of Christianity, their, their churchianity. Well, I'll tell you what their version of churchianity is. It's it's really the in the Nicene Creed, in the Apostles' Creed, which, you know, kind of paraphrase, we believe in God the Father, creator of the heavens and the earth. I believe that. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, was dead, and descended to the dead, was buried and raised on the third day. I'll stop right there. That is a statement of faith. That's a statement of pure stupidity and denial of everything Yeshua did. He was born of a virgin and suffered under Pontius Pilate. What happened to his whole ministry? What happened to everything he did and everything he said? He came into a world that for 300 years was completely engrossed in rabbinic Judaism, in the rules and regulations that Pharisees made up and added thousands of commandments to the word of God and took away hundreds of commandments and yet Moses told us a commandment from heaven, you shall not add to the words which I command you, you shall not diminish from the words so that you may keep all the commandments of Yehovah your God. That's the foundational commandment in the Torah. But what did the Pharisees do? The same thing the Christians did and do. They added their own commandments, they took away any commandments that didn't fit with their social gospel, they then elevated everything to be peace and prosperity and just God just wants you to be happy. God, forgive us. But this is what it's turned into, this pure nonsense. And now, you've got, you've got a whole theology and they ask, well, how did Jews go to heaven? How did Jews, how, how did they, how were Jews saved before Jesus came? How did Jews go to heaven? Where are you, how, where are, uh, are you going to go when you die? Do you know where you'll be when you die? I know where I'm gonna be when I die. I'm gonna be dead. I'm gonna be buried. I'm gonna be in the grave, and if I'm not that lucky, then my rotted body, which will probably be in a mass grave, 
my rotted body will be raised and I will be given an incorruptible body. If I happen to still be alive, which is like that, that's like slim and none. I'm like, none of, my father is dead, he's in the grave. My grandfather, he's dead, he's in the grave. And his father, I suppose he's dead too and in the grave. And his father, perhaps he's dead and in the grave too. Yeah, I know when, where I'm gonna go when I die. I'm gonna be dead and in the grave. The same place that Peter, the same place that Paul. I mean, they had their heads cut off, they were hung on crosses. Where are they? They're dead, they're in the grave. No, Peter is not standing at some pearly gates. The pearly gates don't exist, people. That's the end of the book of Revelation. That's a new Jerusalem, new heaven and new earth. There is no pearly gates right now. If anyone went to heaven, if anyone, really goes to heaven, they would see exactly what John did. When he went to heaven, he would see the seven flaming spirits of God before the throne that roar, the seven flaming spirits of God. They would see the sea of fire and glass surrounded by 24 thrones with 24 elders, crowned elders. These are the ones that Yeshua took to heaven when he was raised, the saints in the grave arose and appeared to many in the streets of Jerusalem. And the following morning, he told Miriam, now go tell my disciples I send to my father and their father, my God and their God, and to meet me in the Galilee. Yeshua then takes those 24 elders and they are in the throne room of Almighty God. They would see, anyone who has been to heaven would see that altar of incense that, that, that are the prayers of the saints and the incense that go up in the nostrils of God Almighty. They would see Yeshua seated on the right hand of the Father. They would see four living monstrous creatures with six wings covering them and eyes all over their wings. That's what they would see. And when they shout holy, the entire universe shakes. That's what it looks like in heaven. There are no birds. There's your, your dog did not go to heaven when it died. Your dog is as dead as the Apostle Paul. This is, this is stupid. This is insane. And you've got to tell the truth to people out there. You've got to get in the churches and you've got to tell the truth, people. If it's all left up to me, is it gonna get done? No, I'm gonna take you through the book of Revelation. I'm gonna give you this whole chart. I'm gonna take you through the whole thing so that you understand. But before then, We have to discuss the mystery of iniquity. The behind the scenes working of Satan as a God of this age. See, the word mystery is from the Greek word mysterion. Mysterion, which is defined in Webster's International Dictionary as a substantive secret, that which has been kept cautiously revealed something that has not been revealed or cannot be explained to novices or the uninitiated. Now, that's pretty common because we are all novices in one field or another. I know a great deal about this much. A great deal, but only about a field that wide. We are all novices, but we don't need to be novices concerning the truth of God's word. The mystery that we are going to describe and define and, and, and dissect from the scripture is the mystery of iniquity. Now, mysteries that can't be explained to novices, we, we need to have a thorough understanding of the scripture. And in the course of this teaching, I am going to reveal some, some things that most of the Christian world has been completely vapid of. 
prophecies concerning the last days that James spoke of, that the prophet Amos spoke of, that Isaiah spoke of, that the one, the Messiah, would sit on his throne in the tabernacle of David. The Messiah would do this. This is a prophecy that has not been fulfilled. As a matter of fact, the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of David were hidden by Jeremiah. We read about this, not only in the book of Jeremiah that Baruch wrote, but also in the book of Maccabees, which is a copy of the scroll that Baruch wrote, in which it details that Jeremiah and several of the faithful priests during the Babylonian siege were instructed by the Almighty to go up on the Temple Mount, remove the tabernacle of David from the stone chamber where it had been stored since it was broken down, disassembled, uh, and stored when Solomon brought the Ark of the Covenant into the Temple of Solomon. Jeremiah is told to bring the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of David and the altar of incense and hide it away in a cave. And we've got the record of that. It was originally in your 1611 King James Version of the Bible until it was taken out in 1885 by the American and British Bible Societies, but that doesn't mean it's not true. They just took it out. The Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of David are absolutely essential to understand what's going to happen in the last days. They are essential to understand the mystery of iniquity. Now I couldn't unpack all this when I first wrote the book 20 years ago because I did lay it out but the editors went through it and said, you know, this is another book. And so I've been teaching it. And as I teach this, I, I recognize that as I'm teaching this to different groups, I realize that I'm taking this from the perspective that they have already read and, and understand the book of Exodus and Deuteronomy and concerning the Ark of the Covenant and the Tabernacle of David that they have to understand 2 Samuel. And then after 2 Samuel, they need to have a thorough understanding of Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and then Daniel. And then we can go into the details concerning the book of Maccabees, which records the hiding of the Ark of the Covenant. But unless you have a, an understanding of this, I find that it's like I'm talking to deaf ears. Now, when I started on this journey, I was, I, was a, I was a child. And for years, the years that I was in the Marine Corps, we, we had people over to our home every single night for years, for three hours and four hours to study the scriptures. And I had the opportunity of being alone on post 20, Guantanamo Bay for, for five months and 20 days in which I had nothing to do. As long as nobody was shooting at us, I had nothing to do but read and memorize the scripture to, to, uh, to, to understand it. And my desire was to understand the gospels, the chronology of the gospels because I believe that the most important words for us to translate correctly are the words of the prophet, the prophet who Moses says, we must hear and obey. And yet, in all my years of church, nobody is teaching what Yeshua taught. They just tell Jesus stories. I am sick and tired of these insipid Jesus stories about the eight pound, six ounce baby Jesus, about the blessed art thou. How about you would get down to Yeshua said, do not think for one second I've come to bring peace to the earth. I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring a sword of division. I am going to rule this earth. I am going to raise the dead. 
And if you want to be part of my millennial kingdom, then I need you to do your job as priests and kings. I wrote in the first chapter of the mystery of iniquity, the fear of the Lord, the fear of Yehovah, is the beginning of knowledge, without which there are some things that cannot and will never be understood. Spiritual understanding can come via direct revelation from God to the individual or by the revelation contained in his written word. And that is what we rely on, the revelation contained in his written word. So many times I hear people get revelations, they get dreams and visions, they get taken to heaven, they get taken to hell, they get these things, and it contradicts the scripture. We are not going to listen to those who do not speak according to the Torah and the commandments, who do not speak according to the written revelation of the word of God. And this revelation that's in the written word came to us by direct revelation from God to his prophets. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. This is the first thing that we know, that no prophecy of the scripture came at any time by the will of man. No, it doesn't matter what you want or what you will, no. It didn't come by the will of man, but it came by revelation. Holy men of God who spoke as they were moved by the Spirit. The revelation in the written word does not open in full bloom to a novice upon their first perusal of the scriptures. And how many ridiculous ideas come up because somebody decides they're gonna read the Bible and they interpret a verse according to their perspective, what it means to them. As Paul said, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any one's own interpretation of any private interpretation. The word private interpretation is idios epilusos, one's own idios, one's own letting loose. Just let your mind loose and whatever you think it says, no, that is not it. We have to go by what the scriptures say. And that's what I'm trying to communicate, I'm trying to burn this into your brain, that we're gonna go by what the scriptures say instead of the lies that have been repeated from pulpits and from books, million sellers that made people millions of dollars left behind all this absolute trash, preaching a pre-tribulation rapture. There is no such thing. Thus saith Yehovah, there is no pre-tribulation rapture. There I said it, I have prophesied. Thus saith Yehovah. Why can I say that? Because of revelation. Direct revelation from God to his prophets who wrote it in the scripture. And I'm gonna read it every line to you so that you will never make this mistake. Why am I yelling? Because I'm trying to burn it into your brain. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at Satan. I'm mad at the church. I'm mad at the religious world for attacking the truth. And so I'm attacking back. I am a soldier who is attacking Satan on the very ground that he is dominating at this moment in time. Because the mystery of iniquity is about to unleash all hell upon planet Earth. And it's already happening. We can see it on the news every day. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth and the rulers of this earth, the deep state, the atheist, the socialists conspire together against Yehovah and against his anointed. Not only against the Messiah, but upon those who he has anointed to speak the truth. They want to shut us up. They want to shut us down. And that's why we can't go the, this whole program on YouTube or on Facebook because what we're saying is will be considered hate speech. Why? Because Yeshua in the book of Revelation, when he speaks of the doctrines and the deeds of the Nicolaitans, he says, I hate it. 
I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. I hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. He hates it, he hates it, he hates it. The Bible, the Holy Scriptures, are full of God's hate against Satan and what he has done to people. He hates that Satan, who has been delivered all the power, the wealth, the glory, all, all the wealth and the power and the glory of this world has been delivered to him and to whomsoever very well he gives it. It's been delivered to him. And by who? It was delivered to him by its original recipient, Adam. And when Adam delivered it to Satan, there was no getting it back. We're gonna read about this in the book of the Revelation when we get to that. No way to get it back. And so he gives a piece of his new world order, his atheist, his antichrist, his anti-God world. He gives a piece of it to those who will bow the knee. And these people who will bow the knee to Satan, there is no such thing as truth. They will lie. They will lie to anyone. That's why we have an opportunity to elect leaders in this country, and we should never elect anyone who does not believe in God and God-given rights, because that's the foundation of this nation. In America, we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal in that they are endowed by their creator with absolute, certain, absolute, inalienable rights. Rights that no pope, no king, no religious or civil tyrant has a right to alienate from the people. Rights don't come from the government. Rights are antecedent, antecedent to the Constitution. Rights come from the great legislator of the universe, God Almighty. So a quote from Samuel Adams, John Adams, one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence, his brother stated, our rights come from God, that's what this country is founded on. Uh, this country is not founded on, this strength is not diversity. No, that is a damned lie. It's not diversity, it's united. It is united in our declaration that God Almighty has given man rights that no one has the right to challenge, and we are staking our lives, our honor, our fortunes, and we are putting it all at risk, and we are going to war against the King of England to establish that nation, one nation, under God, united, under God. We are right now training for our positions. We have been given talents by Yeshua. Talents back then was money, it's a parable. We have been given talents and we are supposed to invest them for the kingdom. When Yeshua comes back, he's going to take inventory. It's called the sea of fire and glass. Our works are gonna be tried by fire. If our works are burned, then we'll suffer loss. But if we build on the foundation of Yeshua as our Messiah, gold, silver, and precious stone, that's gonna be purified in that day, and we are going to be rewarded according to what we have done. Done as what? As priests and kings who rule by his authority now who are occupying till he comes now, who are doing what he has told us to do. And in our next section, we're going to get into that after we close down from this public address. Because what we have to say is not gonna fly on Christian television because they've already shut me down in so many areas because they don't want me play, messing with their sacred cash cows out there. They shut me down on social media because there are things that Yeshua hates and I hate them too. And I'm gonna speak out on these things. 
If you're thin skin, if you just want a sweet baby Jesus message, then you know you can you can you know, you don't even have to turn us off. We'll go off. You have to go find me on our network because I'm not done. Let's continue on. Without the fear of the Lord, there's some things that cannot and will never be understood. A case in point is the book of Revelation. It says right at the very beginning, the very first verse. Now, regardless of what it says in the the title right above, it says the revelation of St. John the Divine. What a horrid, what an insult. The book of the Revelation, this is the only book that Yeshua wrote personally. John was simply his scribe. Just like Baruch was the scribe of Jeremiah, Jeremiah didn't write his own book. Read the book of Jeremiah, it tells you that Baruch wrote all these words. Well, John wrote all these words, but don't say it's a revelation of St. John the Divine. It says right at the beginning, this is a revelation of Jesus Christ, or Yeshua the Messiah, which God gave unto him, unto Yeshua, to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And it's really swiftly come to pass. To show to his servants. This is written to the servants of the Messiah. This is why basically nobody in the Christian world understands the book of Revelation. They don't even read it. It was almost removed from the Bible a hundred years after the canon of the scripture. It was finally put back in because there were those who read it who understood it. But those who first assembled the canon of scripture, the Council of Nicaea, these guys, they were Gentiles and most of them were complete idiots. Wouldn't know the word of God. Well, thankfully, thankfully, it was preserved for us. This is the revelation which God, the Father, Yehovah gave unto Yeshua to show to his servants the things which must come to pass. It's written to the servants. Why people don't understand it? Because it wasn't written to them. They are not servants. They are not living and reigning as priests and kings now. They are not serving the Messiah with all their heart. Oh, yes, they went forward and they they did a repair to me, got a gospel of John so they could get saved and go to heaven when they die. You know, and other stupid ideas. Yeah, and, and, and just live like the rest of the world the rest of the time. They said they got born again, I got born again. No, you didn't. You don't get born again. You don't get saved until our Savior saves you. When he returns and saves your molded body from the grave, who, who saves your mortal body and changes that into an immortal body, that is when you're saved. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. What what part of the, the very first thing that he says to Nicodemus do you not understand? Oh, you're supposed to be a big master of Israel and you don't know these things? Well, the Christian world doesn't understand. They think they, they did a repeat after me prayer and then they got saved. No, you didn't. That is a perversion, it's a grace perversion. Oh yeah, I did this and now I can live like hell. I don't have to obey God's commandments anymore. I, I can murder, I can have, commit adultery, I can have sex with animals or another man or another woman. Someone else's wife, oh Jesus paid it all, he can't judge me because he looks on me and he only sees righteousness. Oh, tell that to Yeshua. Oh. Well, I don't know. Now they tell me that uh, the logarithms, the artificial intelligence can read your, uh, your voice. And so I just can only say, Jesus loves you. Whatever Jesus is to you, he just loves you. Jesus just wants you to be happy. He wants you to send all your money t- to you're, you're uh, a, a, a preacher who, who flies a jet around the world so that you can be healed and you can be healthy and wealthy and wise like he is too. Oh, that, that, that will make it right by all the artificial intelligence. But what I'm telling you 
is the truth. And ladies and gentlemen, it's high time that the truth was told in this nation. This is it. This, this nation is going down the tubes because the Christians have not taken a stand. They call themselves Christians, but are they disciples of the Messiah? Are they teaching what he taught? Or did they just do a repeat after me prayer and they think, now it's all good? 